Hi there. I'm sure you've all heard about the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Well, our car and track camera crew settled in not far from those mountains in a little town called Martinsville, and that's where we built this show. Now, I'm not too familiar with the Southern social calendar, but on their racing calendar of events, the Dogwood 500 is a must. It consists of two 250-lap races. The first is for the late model sportsman cars. The second is for the modifieds. And hey, we have them both for you today. We call it Car and Track's contribution to mayhem. Martinsville Speedway, one of the prettiest half-mile tracks we've ever seen. Not only that, but one of the most successful. Clay Earls and Dick Thompson are two of the men most responsible for the growth factor. Every year, the improvements they make to the Speedway are surpassed only by the purses they pay. The grab bag for this double feature is just a little over $60,000. And with a pot of gold like that at the end of the rainbow, Martinsville Speedway hosts some of the fiercest competition in the country. Now, the late model sportsman cars move out and into their two abreast parade lap formation. 77, Harry Gant was the fastest qualifier and starts on the pole. Sonny Hutchins is alongside in the 01 Chevelle. Car 11, driven by Ray Hendricks, starts third, with Jack Ingram in car 10 in the fourth slot. The third row features number one Morgan Shepard and car nine Red Cagle. Both are Chevelles. Out of the fourth turn, the pace car pulls down pit row and all cars wind up for the start. Uh-oh, a tangle at the start line. Suddenly, the front straight looks like Times Square on New Year's Eve. It seemed like every car in the field wanted to be the first across the start line. I believe it was Sonny Hutchins in the 01 Chevelle that lost it on the outside. From there on, it was Katie by the door. Here's a replay from our first turn camera. to expect action at these dogwood races, but not that quick. Four cars were eliminated in the wreck. Number 10, Jack Ingram, the 01, Sonny Hutchins, 33, Roy Hendrick, and 23, Gene Morgan. Now the pace car leads them down for the single file restart. It's a clean one this time, and they're off. Seventy-seven, Harry Gant is the leader down the back chute. Eleven, Ray Hendricks is second, with Shepard running third. Number eight, Junior Crouch, does a looper entering the second turn. He remains untouched and heads back in the race. Gant still holds on to the lead, but number 11, Ray Hendricks, is riding a hot little Nova and dogs him through every turn. Entering the first turn, Bill Dennis belches the bottom out of his Chevy and heads for the pits to put the double O behind the wall and out of the race. One lap later, at the other end of the track, McQuirt in car 58 tries a shortcut, but loses it in the grass and the yellow flag is out while the wreckers come out to give him a hand. Lead cars are now Gant in 77. Second is Ray Hendricks. Third is the 04 Dodge with Joe Milliken aboard, with fourth place being held down by Morgan Shepard in the Chevelle number one. Is it 5 sixteenths or 9 30 seconds? Does it take a standard socket or metric? What you need is Gator Grip. It's a single socket that fits any size nut or bolt. Gator Grip replaces this entire set of standard sockets and all these metric sockets as well. No matter what size the bolt, small, medium, or large, Gator Grip will fit it. This is what I used to haul around with me, but no more. Now this is all I need. Whatever the job, Gator Grip and tackle it. Gator Grip is quality made in the USA. It grabs onto any size bolt with the strength of a gator. The secret is these 54 spring-loaded pins. They retract to form tightly around whatever size bolt you have. 
Watch, this man is using a regular socket set. He has to change sockets with every bolt. But this man is using Gator Grip. No searching, no changing, he's done. Watch in slow motion with part of the casing removed so you can see the steel pins in action. Gator Grip is so versatile it can tackle these wing nuts. Eye bolts too. It can also take care of those square nuts. And look, it can even remove broken nuts, strip nuts, and rusted nuts quickly and easily. Watch it, a slipped wrench can really bruise your knuckles, but Gator Grip always holds securely. It delivers over a hundred foot-pounds of torque. Charlie's got a whole garage full of tools, but I've got Gator Grip. It does the job every time. Why spend hundreds of dollars on all these tools? All you need is Gator Grip. It's always the right tool, and it's yours now through this special TV offer. It comes with a lifetime replacement warranty, plus a money-back guarantee if you're not delighted. But wait! Order now, and you'll also get this power adapter that turns any drill or power screwdriver into a power Gator Grip. It gets the job done in no time. Imagine all the convenience of Gator Grip and power, too. This is one offer you won't want to miss so get a grip get gator grip now he passes somebody and he passes somebody else and he passes somebody else into the big turn he's taking the lead he's gonna win the 500 cc gp world championship another victory for the great freddie spencer and the crowd goes wild speed vision all the thrills without the road rash all right, Spencer, you're free to go. The pace car is off, the green is out, and they're gone. Diamond was number 18, Bryant, that lost it in turn one, then got tunked in the nose by Satch Worley in car 29. With both cars straddling the track, the yellow light is on, and the pace car moves out to line them up. There they go, and the fifth restart of the day is underway. and Hendricks both start to move away from the field. And you can see why. The traffic is thick and wild back there. That was Tommy Houston in number 95, who just put his Chevelle on a spinner in turn two. But it takes more than that to put him out, and he heads back in the race. Meanwhile, Hendricks is working Harry Gant over on every turn of the racetrack. At some tracks we cover, we're used to the action happening in certain turns. Here at Martinsville, it's all over the racetrack. Like number 16, Butch Lindley, who blows his engine on the back chute and Gene Glover, who spins in the first turn. With all this work for the cleanup crews, the yellow flag flies, and some thirsty gas tanks and worn-out tires head for the pits. As all cars come down for the restart, there's another tangle in turn four. On the restart, number three, Ted Harefield spins, and Eddie Royster in 88 kisses him. It's there that they got married. Shortly after, though, there was a separation, and both cars once again lined up behind the pace car for another start. Here it is, they're clean, hot, and off. Into the 
first turn, number 11, Ray Hendricks, is the leader, followed by the 04 Dodge, Joe Milliken, the driver. Ray Hendricks pulls the plug on his Nova, trying to put daylight between himself and the rest of the field. There's another one, 77 Harry Gant loses it coming out of the third turn, but he's down on the grass, gets out on the track, and back in the race. Every turn is hot. This time it's the second pocket where Junior Crouch loses it and draws another yellow flag. While the wreckers get him straightened away, Ray Hendricks falls in behind the pace car to get the remainder of the field lined up for yet another restart. out. It's Hendricks, Milliken, Shepard, and number 55 running fourth, Tiny Lund. Joe Milliken in the blue 04 Dodge is running second, and he has all the parts working overtime in an all-out effort to catch Hendricks Nova. Tiny Lund in the blue 55 just took the third place spot away from Morgan Shepard, and he's now trying to close on Milliken. <laughs> on the 177th lap, Bob Smith spun his number 77 Chevelle, but kept it off the wall and goes back in the race. Meanwhile, Ray Hendricks lets it all hang out in his number 11 Nova to maintain the lead. For the second time today, number 95 driven by Tommy Houston gets crossed up. This time, it's in the third turn. He tunks the left front fender but he still whips it around and gets back in the race. There's the white flag for Ray Hendricks. One more lap and he counts the green. flag snaps down over the hood of Hendricks Nova as he grabs the win for the first half of the Dogwood 500. Joe Milliken finishes second, and Tiny Lund takes home the third place money. Ray's win was worth $4,400 to him, but right now, he's thinking about getting his sportsman car back to the pits and warming up his modified. That's right, he's in the next race, too, and winning that one would give him a clean sweep. We'll be back to cover part two of the Dogwood 500 after this message. Welcome to the future of drafting. Wow, I bet the guys that run this stuff spent years in school. No, you might be surprised. So what are the chances of me getting to work here? Well, first of all, you gotta love to draw. And second? And second, you gotta call ITT Tech. Call ITT Technical Institute at 1-800-446-4130 for this informative brochure. That's 1-800-446-4130. When he took apart my drill just to see how I worked, he made me mad. When he built his first radio to contact life on other planets, he made me laugh. When he picked electronics as a career, he made me think. And when he graduated from ITT Tech, he made me proud. For an informative brochure, call ITT Tech at 1-800-446-4130. That's 1-800-446-4130.
For the restoration of your Chevelle, El Camino, Monte Carlo, GTO, Tempest, or Le Mans, if you want parts that fit like the originals, call Original Parts Group. When it comes to quality control and selection, no one beats Original Parts Group because they manufacture most of the parts they sell. The customer is number one, and service is a top priority at Original Parts Group, and they back it up with a 100% money-back guarantee. Call 1-888-OPG Catalog now for a free 1998 catalog. Call Original Parts Group before you restore. This country was built with hard work, imagination, and good tools. The same is true today, and Harbor Freight offers the tools to keep this country running strong. You can order quality name brand tools at the lowest prices from the convenience of your home, office, or workshop. Power and tools, automotive and shop equipment, air tools and compressors, metal working and woodworking, all from our free Harbor Freight Tools catalog. A good investment pays off over the long haul. From air compressors and air tools to paint sprayers and pressure washers, Campbell Hausfeld Powered Equipment is built to last. RYOBI, Pro Features at Affordable Prices, now featuring the 101-piece multi-tool kit. Call 1-800-905-5503 for your free Harbor Freight Catalog. Make some history of your own. Harbor Freight Tools, where good tools and good value are never out of date. After only a 20-minute intermission, the Modifieds moved out to take over the stage for part two of this Dogwood 500. Paul Radford has the pole position in his Vega number 26. 45, Satch Worley starts alongside in the Gremlin. The second row features number 61, Richie Evans, and car three, Eddie Pianizak, both driving Pintos. The fifth starting position is owned by number 46, Harry Gant, in a Gremlin. And sixth is the Mustang number one. Ray Hendricks is the driver. When the pace car drops onto pit row, a whole snarling pack of modifieds comes screaming through the fourth turn. The green is out, and this one is on the clock. Number 45, Satch Worley leads him down the back chute. 26, Paul Radford is second, with 61, Richie Evans running third. On the back straight, Hendricks kicks his Mustang hard and moves up to challenge Richie Evans for third. On the second lap, Radford passes Worley to grab the lead. And in the third turn, Ray Hendricks moves into second. Everybody's scrambling and jockeying for position. Hendricks pushes a little too hard entering the third turn and taps the wall. The car's all right, and he takes it back in the race. Now, Freddy DeCero gets a little squirrely through the turn. Look out, fourth turn. The roughest accident of the day thus far happens on the 25th lap when Paul Radford loses control of his Vega number 26 through the turn crashing head-on into the wall. This draws a yellow flag, and the pace car comes out to lead the remainder of the field around the track. The wrecker tows the car into the garage area, and the ambulance took Paul Radford to the Martinsville Hospital, where he was treated and later released. On this restart, Richie Evans is the leader in number 61. Ray Hendricks is second, Satch Worley third. First turn is hot. Cicero started that one. He lost it coming into the first turn. Car nine, Ray Miller went high to the wall, and number 18, Raj Griffith went up and over his rear wheel. The fire crews smother Miller's blaze in a hurry. The pace car is out quickly. 
And this is the way they'll line up for the restart. One, Ray Hendricks, the leader. 61, Richie Evans, second. And car 40, Don Diefendorf, third. Green is out. The blitz is on. Hendricks has the lead with only daylight showing, and he starts to run away. Sixty-one, Richie Evans heads the Pinto toward the pits. He's got some power problems. On the track, Hendricks is pushing harder than ever. And now Satch Worley has moved into second place with Billy Hensley in the 07 Pinto running third. Oh no, Hendricks was trying a little too hard. He came up full bore behind a slower car, number 57 driven by John Bryant, and actually tried to blow him off the track. As a result, both cars are into the wall and out of the race. With the yellow out, some of the lead cars take this opportunity to pit. It's go time again. Now the lead is held by number five, Ed Flemke, with the 06, Marv Treichler second, and 77, Fidanza holding third. Look out, on the front chute. Number 33, Ed Barton lost it on the front straight, and Jeff Bodine, spinning frantically off the wall, crashes into another car and triggers the explosion. Drivers are flying out of their cars. Fire crews are pouring in from every direction. The red flag is out, and cars brought to a halt as the front chute is obscured with smoke, caused by the biggest fire in the history of Martinsville Speedway. Since the first car rolled off the assembly line, waxes and polishes have promised protection by making water bead. But you know that every time it rains, those beads dry into dirty water stains that can actually create pit marks in your finish. Pit marks that let water beads get under the paint, where they inevitably destroy the value of your car. But now there's DuraShine, the revolutionary new technology that actually sheets water away totally dry, protecting your car with a shine so new it's patented. Only DuraShine gives you total protection in just minutes. Just wipe it on, then hose it off. It's that easy. With DuraShine, every time it rains, it's like taking your car to the car wash. That's why only DuraShine can make this guarantee. You'll never have to wax, polish, or take your car to a car wash again. You'll never have to dry your car again. Any car, old or new. Only DuraShine was tested for three years by new car dealers. Only DuraShine can be applied in sun or shade, inside or outdoors. Only DuraShine protects against acid rain, water stains, pit marks, and ultraviolet rays. And only DuraShine can protect against a laser beam. Virtually all other car waxes contain toxic petroleum distillates. But DuraShine is a friend of the environment. And best of all, DuraShine is yours for only $14.95. Order now and you'll also receive DuraWash. Clean and protect your car easier than you ever thought possible. You'll also get DuraShine leather and vinyl protectant. It cleans, restores, and protects. And you'll receive Tire Shine, the incredible tire treatment that brings your tires back to looking like new. We'll also include three Synthurst chamois. Everything you see here for only $14.95. And that's not all. Call now and get a second kit for only $5. That's right, a second kit for only $5. That's two complete kits for only $19.95. So pick up the phone and call now. To order DuraShine, have your credit card ready and call the 800 number on your screen. Or send a check or money order to the address listed. So call the number on your screen and order today. If you have any questions about Speed Vision, or just wish to comment about our programming. We want to hear from you. Please call our toll-free viewer service number, 1-888-22-SPEED. After the firefighters finished their work, wreckers were brought out to tow the charred chassis back into the garage area. 
The cars involved were number 33, Ed Barton, 16, Jeff Bodine, 4, Brian Ross, 45, Satch Worley, and the 01, Melvin Chilton. Miraculously, all drivers got out and were uninjured. The race was stopped for 51 minutes before the pace car could lead them down for this restart. The 00 car, a 36 Chevrolet with Lloyd Ashby aboard as the new leader. Car two, Richard Dunn has the second spot and number 17, Ron Bouchard, who just took over third. Down the back chute, Bouchard takes over second and now begins to close the gap on Ashby. But a very familiar number 15, driven by Buck Stevens, has moved up into the third position, and he's a strong contender on any track. Entering turn one, Ron Bouchard finds daylight underneath Ashby's Chevy, puts a wheel in, and drives through the hole to take over the lead. The next yellow comes as a courtesy to a three-car bummer in turn two. Number 73, John Rosati spins, and 39, Don Dion ends up against the wall. Once again, the pace car is on the track. Ron Bouchard leads the field out of the fourth pocket and down the front chute under the green, and he has Buck Stevens in second and breathing right down his pipe. a hard way to stop. Ed Flemke in the Pinto number five uses about 30 feet of the concrete wall in the fourth turn and comes to a halt right under our camera. He's all right, so is the car. Both of them drive away and back in the race. Meanwhile, Bugsy Stevens squeaks through a hole in the fourth pocket to pass Ron Bouchard, and the number 15 Vega is the new leader. car is handling beautifully and he pours it on closing the gap on that checkered flag 17 Bouchard is second number 38 Jerry Cook is third and Mike Losher in car 88 is fourth the white flag is out one more lap and Steven stakes a claim on a big chunk of the purse down the back shoot into turn three and he's still moving The black and white checks fall on a very happy Bud Stevens after an accident-riddled part two of this Dogwood 500.